Hi, I'm Dr. Temi Taioi Gilechiri, and I'm here today with Dr. Florian Eichler. We're here to talk about some of the exciting abstracts that we had seen at the CNS meeting, Child Neurology Society meeting. And so, Dr. Eichler, nice to meet you. Could you tell us more about some of the work that you presented this year at CNS? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm a neurologist who has been working on uh, X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy for more than 20 years. Um, and just to briefly introduce this uh, disorder, it's a devastating disorder of childhood that we've known about for more than 100 years uh, due to a single gene defect in ABCD1 that uh, causes uh, boys between the ages of 4 and 10 uh, to um, develop personality changes, attention deficit, and progressive neurologic dysfunction leading most of them to either be left in a vegetative state or dead. But over the past 10, 15 years, we've been able to develop a new approach to gene therapy in these boys using an ex vivo lentiviral gene therapy approach. In brief, uh, what we do is we take the boy's own bone marrow cells as soon as we see a sign of the inflammatory demyelination in the brain, we harvest those uh, bone marrow cells, transfect them in a dish with, with a lentiviral vector delivering a healthy copy of ABCD1. And then we give these cells back to the boys after a brief amount of conditioning, uh, either with um, busulfan and cyclophosphamide or busulfan and fludarabine. And these cells move then from bone marrow to blood and from blood to brain, where they become microglia-like cells. And so we reported on uh, more than 50 boys that we've treated worldwide with this approach. And we were very excited that 91% of these boys are neurologically stable and, uh, and living fulfilled lives without any signs of major functional disability. That's certainly very exciting. I feel as if um, the therapeutics that are getting out there now are great and are providing a lot more um, potential cures for a lot of our patients. Could you tell us a little bit about the early natural history of the of kind of pre-symptomatic CCL ALD and perhaps when we should begin this treatment, when we should begin the therapy uh, to be able to get these uh, great uh, um, outcomes that you have had so far? Yeah, no, it's a good question, uh, Tim Kaya. The fortunate situation we're in right now is that uh, newborn screening for this disorder um, was uh, recommended um, by uh, the Uniformed um, Screening Panel and uh, is being rolled out across the United States. And more than the half of the population in the U.S. is now being screened for this disorder. So you know about this uh, disease already at birth. You can detect the very long chain fatty acids that are the biochemical hallmark of this disorder. You can find the ABCD1 mutation uh, within the first months of life. Um, but the challenge here is to only treat those boys who are developing inflammatory demyelination. And that is not all boys, that is about 30 to 40% of them, who, of the boys who carry this mutation. So there is an established monitoring program that uh, follows brain MRIs in these boys uh, um, every year over the first three years and then every six months from three to 10. And as soon as you see an early lesion in the brain that shows the hallmark of active inflammatory demyelination, namely contrast enhancement. That is when we proceed with treatment. And the nice thing about this is that the boys at that time are either asymptomatic or very early uh, in, in, their, in their symptoms because the MRI changes really precede neurologic symptoms. And that's very important for physicians and families to know. Absolutely, that's great. And so um, how do you think this will impact practice? So we child neurologists, how will this impact practice long-term? 
And um, when do you think we'll be able to have easy access to this uh, treatment option um, across the board? Yes, very good question. I can tell you how it has impacted me. When I started my clinic uh, at Mass General after coming from Hopkins 15 years ago, most of the boys who came to my practice were either in, in, in wheelchairs or at death's door. And so it was a very um, difficult and, and, and devastating scenario. And right now, most of the boys who come to me are reporting back from soccer camp. They're leading uh, full lives and, and sending me photos from all the different uh, family occasions they're at. So I, it has had a deep impact upon my practice and particularly it has opened up options for families. Whereas before, when we saw boys in the advanced symptomatic stages, our options were very limited. The only thing that we knew um, worked was a bone marrow transplantation, but that too had to be performed in the early stages of uh, brain disease. And all the um, side effects of engraftment problems and graft versus host disease were very hard for families and, and children to bear. So I think this is having a big impact uh, on this field, particularly if we can avoid the kinds of adverse events due to allogeneic bone marrow transplantation. So um, there, there are clearly a lot of unknowns still in the field, and we need to monitor uh, these children long-term um, for any um, emergence of clones, and the FDA is keeping a, a close eye on this as well. But the fact that we are able to more safely restore uh, the gene and correct the gene and halt this uh, lesions in the brain from growing seems like a big sea change for, for my field. 